Okay, remember what we did last class is separable differential equations. So we have something like, um, for instance, something like that. And we have something that is mixed like this one. So the idea is really uh, <clears throat> separate all the x's in one side, all the y's in one side, doing algebra, correct? So um, the example we're going to solve today, beginning with, is this one. So we have um, the derivative of y respect x equals 3 e x minus y, y of negative two equals the ln of three e squared plus three over e squared. So it's a strange initial condition, but it's going to simplify what we need, correct? So here is the equation, correct? <clears throat> now, if you don't have an initial condition, remember you are just going to express your solution with a constant of integration. You don't have to find more. Once you solve for y, if possible to do so, you only leave the constant. If you have a value like this, the x and the y, then you can find the value of the constant, right? Okay, let's see. <clears throat> let's begin here with our algebra. So we have dy dx equals three e x minus y. That's my equation. I begin with that one. It's an is an equation, algebraic equation. So I have here x and y's, I have here x and y's. So I have to split this and collect all the y's in one side, all the x's in one side, correct? So I have to remember my algebra one. <clears throat> a to the n plus m is a to the n times a to the m. So that's my algebra one, remember. So why I'm going to use this going to split here x and y. I'm splitting here this expression. So this is going to be simply equals 3 e to the x times e e to the negative y. Correct? So using this, I have this. Then I'm going to uh, multiply everything times dx. I need to cancel this dx from this side so I can do dy dx times dx, right, equals 3e e to the x times e to the negative y dx. So I multiply these two. Now, all these, yeah, is like you cancel these two. So it's the differential of y. Remember, it's as, it's not canceling. dy dx times dx is the differential of y. And then here you have 3e e to the x times e to the negative y dx. I still have here uh, <clears throat> a y. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do simply is move this y to the other side. Remember, this e to the negative y, this is a to the negative n is one over a to the n. Remember that algebra? So what I have to do, multiply times e to the y to cancel e to the negative y, correct? So this is going to be, e to the y, dy equals 3e to the x, dx, right? Now, <clears throat> check algebra. All this way to, found, to find this expression where all the y's are in one side and all the x's are in the other side. No mixes, correct? Now, the variable is inside the differential, correct? So, to cancel the differential, I have to integrate, so my calculus begins. So this is integral e to the y, dy equals integral 3e e to the x, dx, correct? dx. Hmm? Well, now we have to do this antiderivative, and you have to remember your formulas, okay? The integral of the exponential is the exponential itself, right? So this three is going to move out. So if I continue here, let me just write my integral again. So it's integral e to the y dy 
equals integral 3e e to the x dx, so the same integral, right? So this antiderivative is e to the y, yeah? And this antiderivative is 3 times e to the x plus a constant. So the constant from this side and the constant from this side is going to be collected in only one constant, okay? We don't need two constants. One is enough. So <clears throat> now uh, I have to put my initial conditions, correct? This one, right here. Hmm? So the point is in for, one, for x equals negative 2, the y is all this thing right here. This is all my, okay, let's see. So for x equals negative 2, okay, let's see. <clears throat> for x equals negative 2, the y is ln 3e e square plus 3 over e square. Okay, so that's my initial condition. So that's what I'm going to use right here. Okay, now this is not calculus, this is basic algebra, right? Okay, so this is e to the negative two equals three, no, yes, e to the, no, this is e to the ln of three e square plus three over e square equals 3e to the negative 2 plus c, correct? Is what I have. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So uh, let's see, nothing missing. Let me just check my notes here, the problem. Yep, yeah, that's it, okay. So I have to solve for e. Now, this e to the ln, these two functions cancel, so I'm going to have here 3e squared plus 3 over e squared equals 3e to the negative 2 plus e, correct? Okay, I continue my thing. So I'm going to have um, to move this to the side. So c equals, um, <clears throat> I'm going to split this one. 3e squared plus 3 over e squared minus 3e negative 2. So what I did, I split this fraction in these two. Oh, this is a 3, sorry. So this over this, the e squares cancel, I have a 3. And this is 3 over e squared, is right here. Yep. Minus this one, minus e to the negative 2. But remember that this is exactly the same because this one, right? a to the negative n is 1 over a to the n. So these two are the same. So this cancel. So c is going to be equals 3, correct? <clears throat> so my solution, if I write my solution, yeah, is going to be simply, yeah, I'm going to write a different color. So it's going to be e to the y is 3e to the x plus 3, correct? Now, is this complete? No, it's not complete yet. So we have to write y equals, so I need another board. I'm going to put here this one, so it's going to have e to the y equals 3e to the x plus 3. <clears throat> so to cancel the e, I have to do ln e to the y equals ln 3e to the x plus 3, right? And this is going to cancel, and I have y equals the ln of 3e to the x plus 1 plus three. This is my answer, correct? That's my answer. So now let's go back to the problem, okay? So we have this differential equation with this initial condition. It's strange, but okay. I have to separate all the y's in one side, all the x's in one side, so I use my algebra. I manipulate my expression, and when finally I find all the y's with dy and all the x's with dx, I integrate both sides. Okay, here the calculus begin. So you integrate, then you get this solution. Then you put the initial condition, and then this is not calculus, this is just algebra that you have to remember. So you manipulate the expression, and then you find this equals three. 
One, this is three, you put it right here. So you can get this one. And well, the only I have to do now is uh, solve for y using again, precalculus or algebra concepts. I find that the y is the natural log of this expression. Okay. So again, we have to use our algebra to survive in these problems. No questions here? Hmm? Okay. <clears throat> um, let me just do another one. Yeah. So let me just go and here, this one right here. We have this one, dy dx equals the secant, the reciprocal of the secant square or one over secant square. Yeah. So you're going to put here dy dx. Let me just write it, dy dx equals one over secant squared y. And the initial condition is y of negative two equals zero. Okay. So there is. Okay, this is the same procedure. I have to collect all the y's and all the x's. Well, I'm going to do my algebra. So this is dy dx equals one over secant squared y, right? And well, you can multiply everything times secant squared y to cancel this. And then you get secant squared y dy dx equals one. Then I have an x here, so I'm going to multiply everything times dx. So secant squared y dy dx times dx equals <clears throat> one times dx. So dx, correct? Now this thing is going to be dy, remember. So secant squared y dy equals dx. Now my variable is inside the secant square, but it's the y and here is the dy. So to cancel out, I have to do my calculus. So I have to integrate both sides. So integral <coughs> secant squared y dy equals the integral of dx or one dx. Now <coughs> you have to remember your antiderivatives, correct? My antiderivatives right here. My antiderivatives. Secant square, oh, tangent, dx, u, or oh, dx is x, or oh, du, u. So here, I'm going to have <coughs> tangent y equals x plus c. So that is my answer. Well, let me just use the color. Tangent y equals x plus c, correct? Okay, now let me just use the initial condition right here. So let me just put here, um, line tangent y equals x plus c. So, and we have that for x equals negative two, the y is zero, correct? So <clears throat> I'm going to put these values right there. So I have, using my algebra, tangent of zero equals negative two plus z. Okay. And then I have to remember what is tangent of zero. Okay, don't worry. But you have to remember those values. Tangent of zero right here. Tangent of zero is zero. Okay, so zero equals negative two plus c, so c equals two. Okay, so that's the value of the constant. Okay, so once I have that one, I plug in, in my uh, equation. So tangent y equals x plus two, and I have now to solve for y, explicit, right? This is correct, but this solution is implicit. I need y equals, so, how do you cancel the tangent with the reciprocal for the inverse function? Who? They are tangent. So I take R tangent of the tangent of Y equals the R tangent of X plus two. <clears throat> Correct? This cancel out and I have Y equals the R tangent of X plus two. And this is the final answer. Okay? 
So again, same procedure. I receive a differential equation, dy dx equals some expression with x or y, an initial condition in this case. Okay, I separate my equation, so I combine, or I do algebra such that all the y's be in one side and all the x's in the other side. So you see my algebra, I separate them, you see, here I have the dy's dx's, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And once I have everything separated, y's times dy's and x's times dx's, I integrate both sides. Well, and the only I have to do is know my calculus and compute the corresponding antiderivatives. And once I have the antiderivative of this, right, I set the initial condition. So where the function is passing, well, it's passing in the point negative to zero. Okay, I plug in those values in my solution, and then I determine my constant. And finally, if the y is not explicit, like in this case, it's inside a tangent, I try to solve or set this in the y equals form using the inverse function, in this case, a tangent, and I get my solution. Okay, pretty much the same. Okay, next example. Mm -hmm. Okay, right here, mm, this one, yeah, looks scary, but don't worry, it's not that bad. Okay, so you have another differential equation, right? Another differential equation, that is dy dx equals 1 plus x squared over y squared, and the initial condition is y of negative one equals the negative cube root of four. Okay. Okay. Let's solve the thing. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So um, let's uh, separate our variables, separate our equation. So again, I have dy dx equals one plus x squared over y squared. I'm going to multiply everything times y squared to cancel out this one. So I have y squared dy dx equals one plus x squared. Yep. Then I have here dx. So I'm going to multiply everything times dx. So I have y squared dy dx times dx equals one plus x squared dx. And then this is going to be dy. So I have y squared dy equals one plus x squared dx. Then you know now the next step. This is plain algebra. Check, no calculus, no derivative, no integral. The integral is right here. So it's going to be integral y squared dy equals the integral one plus x squared dx, correct? That's my integral. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Well, antiderivative of this, antiderivative of this is not that difficult. So I'm going to put the antiderivative right here. So this is y cube over three equal antiderivative of one is x and the derivative of x squared is x cube over three plus the constant of integration plus z, <clears throat> correct? So that's the answer. Okay, well, now I have to set my initial condition. The initial condition say when, a, a, when y, x is one, the y is this one. So y equals negative cubic root of four. So that's my initial condition. So I don't have really to do too much. So I have only to operate my, just look for another black color, this one. Well, use the algebra. So this is negative the cubic root of four cube over three equals negative one plus negative one cube over three plus C. So what I did, I just put these values in this equation, the negative one in this side, the negative cubic root of four in this side. And well, I know that the cubic root and the cube cancels, right? So this is negative four thirds, right? Mm -hmm. 
And this is <coughs> negative one minus one third, because one negative one cube is negative one third plus C. Now this is negative four thirds, and these are three thirds minus one third. These are also negative four thirds plus C. So I found that my C is zero, <coughs> correct? Because when I subtract this one, I get zero from the other side. So my solution, right, is going to be now y cubed over three equals x plus x cubed over three plus zero, correct? Now, the last thing I have to do is my solution for y. So this is y cubed, so I have to solve. So I multiply times three, this is three x plus x cubed, multiply everything times three. And then I have to cube root. So y equals the cubic root of x plus x cubed. And this is my answer. <clears throat> so you see, check the algebra you have to do. Bunch of algebra. First, to separate the equation, right? Then you do your calculus. Once you do your calculus, you set your initial condition. So you do more basic math. And at the end, you do more algebra to set your solution explicit. All these problems follow the same procedure, okay? Questions at this point? No big deal? Well, let me just do one of the next problems. <clears throat> yeah, from these ones. Um, for instance, the last one, right? Let me just try the last one this one right here, to see that these word problems are pretty much the same thing, okay? So in these problems you have, these are from the AP test, right? So, um, but they solve the same, they are solved the same. So this is consider the differential equation dy dx, dy dx equals e to the y, parenthesis, 3x squared minus 6x. And this is y is a function of x, obviously. And the particular solution is 1 comma 0. Yeah. So the first thing you have to do is write the equation for the tangent line, right? Write the equation for the tangent line. So you have to write an equation for a straight line, right? for the point <clears throat> at one comma zero. And this is, use the tangent line to approximate f of 1.2, okay? It's okay. <clears throat> Let me just go to the screen. Okay, this is the equation. This is what we have to solve. Okay, so this is my differential equation. This the assumption y is a function of x, right? And this is the point passing. So when the x is zero, I'm going to put here, the y, the, when the x is one, the y is zero. Okay, the first question is this one. You have to find this the equation of the tangent line in one comma zero. Okay, here in the problem, they gave me already the point x zero comma y zero, that is the point the line passes through, is one comma zero. So this is the x, this is the y. So I have this ray. I have y zero. What is the slope? Oh, the slope, now this is the calculus. The slope, well, the slope is the value of y prime of dy dx, dy dx evaluated in the point one comma zero. So is this derivative because I have here x and y, I have to evaluate for x and y. So I just going to use one comma zero <clears throat> because this is a mix of x and y, is correct? So this is not very difficult. This is going to be simply to put right here e to the zero because that's the y value, three times one s squared minus six times one, correct? If I perform the numbers, e to the zero is one. This is three minus six. 
and this is simply negative three. So that's the slow value. Okay. Mm -hmm. My equation is going to be simply y minus zero, because that's the y zero, equals negative three parentheses x minus one. Correct? So it's very simple, and this problem, those taking the AP test know that we have been working a lot of these ones. They love these problems, the equation of the tangent line. Okay? So <clears throat> the next point is approach this, use this to approach 1.2. Let me just explain what does mean that. Suppose you have here, mm -hmm, um, this is the x, this is the y, and suppose you have here an strange function that is f of x. You don't have the equation for f of x. But for instance, this is one, suppose this is one, the value in one, and then you have the tangent line in one, correct? Suppose now that this is two, and suppose this is 1.2. Here is 1.2, suppose this is 1.2, correct? Now, you know the value of the function in one. So the value of the function in one is, well, one comma zero. Assume that is one comma zero, it's not really, but yeah. okay. Suppose that's the value, right? Now, how do you use this line to approach the function in a point nearby the one? It's very simple. This is y equals <clears throat> negative three x minus one. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the value of the line for the line in 1.2, right? For, we are going to put here 1.2 to approximate the value of the function in 1.2. So this is f in 1.2, right? And this is going to be the value of the line in 1.2. It's not the same, but well, you can consider it's close. So in this case, what you're going to do simply is f in 1.2 is negative three, 1.2 minus one. <clears throat> and then the only you have to do is the basic math. This is negative three times 0 0.2. So f of 1.2 is approximately negative 0 0.6. Obviously this graph is not corresponding to this uh, function, but pretty much it's just to illustrate the idea, correct? Obviously the graph is going to be possibly inverted, passing like right here, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody catch this idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, so question number one, find the equation of the slope, the, of the equation of the tangent line in zero, one zero. So we find x zero, y zero. Well, this is given here, the point. The slope is the derivative in one zero. So you evaluate this expression, you get a value. You set your equation. Then you want to approximate the value of the function over there, okay. So this is the idea. You use the tangent line to approximate values of functions nearby. The line is close to the function. The tangent line is close to the function, close to the tangents, the, the point of tangency is what we do. We approximate 1.2 with the equation of the line in 1.2 and we get a value. Okay, so <clears throat> it's not a big deal. No questions? Okay, next question. This is find y equals f of x, the particular solution to the differential equation that passes through one comma zero. Okay, so I don't have to do too much. So I have in my board the situation. So I have to solve this one. Again, the first thing I have is mix x and y. So they are mixed. So what I have to do is is try to separate them all the y's and all the x's, okay? Okay, here you see that the x's are fine, the y is right here, so I'm going to divide by e to the y. So I'm going to have algebra is one over e to the y, dy dx equals three x squared minus six x, correct? That's the point. Now, here is an x is the x, so what I have to do, 
what I have, I have been doing all these problems. Multiply times dx. So I have one over e to the y, dy dx times dx equals 3x squared minus 6x dx. Now, this is dy. So, and this, I'm going to use the negative exponent property. So this is e to the negative y, dy equals 3x squared minus 6x dx. Now, this equation is ready for calculus now. So, integral of e to the negative y dy is the integral 3x squared minus 6x dx. Okay? Well, now, antiderivative of this. I know the antiderivative of the exponential is the exponential itself, but this is a negative, so I need a negative y here. Derivative of this has to be this one. Antiderivative of 3x squared is x cubed. Antiderivative of negative 6x is negative um, 3x squared plus the constant of integration, correct? <clears throat> yep. Now, I have to use Uh, my initial condition, correct? So I'm going to write the equation here. So for x equals 1, the y is 0. That's the initial condition, right? 1 comma 0. Okay, so I'm going to do that. So, so is e to the negative 0 equals 1 q minus 3 uh, times 1 squared plus z, e, right? e to the negative 0 is e to the 0, that's a 1. 1 cube is a 1, minus 3 plus c. These ones are going to cancel out, so c equals 3, correct? So my solution now is e to the negative y equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3. Now what is missing? y equals. This y is inside the exponential, so all you only have to do is cancel the exponential. I use the inverse function of the exponential, the natural log, both sides. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to find that y is going to be, this negative is going to be here. I'm going to move this negative to the other side. Negative ln of x cubed minus 3x squared plus 3. Okay. You see, it's very repetitive, same structure. Separation of variables, integration, and determination of the constant of integration. If you don't have initial condition, just stop right here. But if you have it, you have to do this, and then finally, you get this one. Well, here you have to do this, but with the C. Instead of the three, you put the C, and then you solve this. Y equals, correct? Questions here?